Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about the alternative investment that no one's really talking about. Um, so I've spent many, many hours searching the internet for alternative investments over the last you know, 10, 15 years, trying to find something that is definitely different, unique, but also affordable. And then we'll dive into this alternative investment that I see going untapped by most people. All right, so looking at Wikipedia here for a definition, an alternative investment is an investment in any asset class, excluding stocks, bonds, and cash. The term is a relatively loose one and includes tangible assets such as precious metals, art, wine, antiques, coins, or stamps, and some financial assets such as real estate, commodities, private equity, distressed securities, hedge funds, exchange funds, carbon credits, venture capital, film production, financial derivatives, and cryptocurrencies. And it goes on to talk about that a little bit more. But today we're gonna to talk about education and we're not gonna talk about it in the sense of a college degree, though a college degree would fall into this. So a lot of times these alternative investments seem somewhat like a gamble, right? You buy a piece of art, uh, usually it's super expensive if it has any value, or you're buying cheaper pieces of art hoping they're going to skyrocket and become very valuable. The same for wine, the same for you know real estate, right? Who has all this extra money? Not to mention if you're taking a lot of risk to buy a second investment property. Doing this just isn't really feasible for most people, but education and specifically free and cheap education can actually enhance your earnings and your investments and the amount of money you have um, just by taking simple educational steps here. But let's just dive on into a few examples here and I'll kind of show you what I mean. Okay, so the difference realistically between a lot of poorer people and wealthier people comes down to the value of your time, right? So a lawyer, for example, or a doctor, they might only work 40, 60 hours a week, maybe 80 hours a week, right? But they're making a lot of money. Um, someone else who has a different type of job, perhaps more of an average job, again, you're making a good living, you're doing well for yourself, but again, you're not getting paid as much per hour. The reason for this is that the amount of skill embedded into your labor, right, the knowledge that you have, impacts how much you get paid. And there are simple things that you can do, and I know many of you are gonna laugh at me on some of these examples, um, but bear with me because I, <laughs> I have people that I have met, I've talked to that won't do these. So the first example here is going to be um, learning to cut your grass, edge your yard, weed eat, do landscaping around your own house. And I know a lot of people think that, oh, everybody knows how to do this. No, they don't. <laughs> I've had colleagues, I've had friends, right? They just didn't know how to use a lawnmower, right? I had to help them pick out a lawnmower, I'd explain how to use the lawnmower, right? I know, but that being said, right, the point here is that having a skill, for example, is landscaping. Um, the average yard in my neighborhood, so I live on one acre lots, they're pretty big, is about 100 to $150 per cut. So when you go to cut your own grass here, right, and gas is probably around $2, $2.50, maybe $3 in some parts of the country, um, it's really not that expensive to cut your own grass. Yes, there is an investment in this. So A, you need to learn how to cut your grass if you don't know how to do it. You need to learn how to edge and weed eat, right? Learn these skills, which seem simple, but again, they add value. Um, you have to make a physical asset investment here as well, right? You need to buy a lawnmower, you need to buy a weed eater, for example, so that you can actually do the work. Anyways, so if you do this yourself, right, so you invest your time and effort into taking care of your own yard, um, you're gonna save money here. As the saying goes, a dollar saved is a dollar earned, right? But this seems like too simple of an example, so let's dive into something a little more practical that takes a little bit more skill learning that most people don't have. Um, and this is gonna come down into auto mechanics, and I know a lot of people think this is somewhat scary, and you're gonna have to draw the line somewhere on what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do, but again, learning these skills, they're free online on YouTube. I watch tons of videos on YouTube on how to do all this, um, and I do a lot of it myself. Um, so for me, drawing that line, I've somewhat drawn the line of transmission. Transmission work, I just don't do. Anything else, for the most part, I'll do, but transmission work, just a little bit too complicated. I don't really wanna invest the time in it, right? You have to draw the line somewhere where you're comfortable what you're willing to do, uh, but let's dive into a few examples on actual cost savings that I have done and seen here on my cars. Um, I own three Subarus. Um, the two Subarus that I have that are gonna be older Subarus is a 97 Subaru Legacy and a 2005 Subaru Legacy. Um, I've had to replace the alternator, right? The average cost for an alternator is $146.99. 
Um, the average repair, if you paid someone to do that work and get the alternator as a part, would cost you $450. All right, so the difference here is going to be $303.01, right? So you're basically saving $300. What would you do with $300, right? A dollar saved is a dollar earned. Um, you would have actually went down to the repair shop. You would have written a check or paid the credit card or whatever for $450. Um, realistically, if you would have watched some videos, learned some mechanics. So again here, I'm not advertising only to use YouTube. Um, you can actually go down to your local community college and you can take classes on for example, auto mechanics. Um, and there are all kinds of different books you can get at the library, for example, on learning how to do a lot of this. But again, education, 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 upskilling yourself and making yourself more valuable is key here. And let's just run through a few more examples quickly. Um, so I've replaced a starter on my car. It costs $92.99. The average repair at a mechanic shop is $296. Um, I've saved $203.01. Um, doing head gaskets. So yes, Subarus are plugged with leaky head gaskets. Um, it's a boxer engine. You have to take the entire engine out of the car. It's a ton of work. Again, a lot of people will draw the line and say, this is too much for me to do, which I completely understand. Uh, but the average repair cost for this is $2,500. Uh, it cost me with fluids, parts, pulleys. I mean, I changed the water pump, tying belt, and a bunch of other stuff when you go in and do this. Um, it cost me about $600. So I save $1,900. I have done this job three different times on three different cars. Uh, I've done my two older cars and I've also done my brother-in-law's car. So again, what would you do with an extra $1,900, right? That's a really, really big expense that comes up. You have to fix it if you wanna drive the car. If not, you gotta get rid of it. Again here, a dollar saved is a dollar earned. And just a few more examples here that are not mechanic related. Um, Doing irrigation systems, so sprinklers here. Uh, in the state of Texas, you can do your own sprinkler systems uh, for your own property and you do not have to be licensed. However, there is a class you have to take if you want to be licensed. I decided to go and pay the money to be educated. It tells you how to design a sprinkler system, talks about all the parts and pieces. Yes, I have helped friends install irrigation systems in the past. I wanted to make sure I had everything dialed in as good and as best as possible. So I invested. $550 um, on a class that comes with a book. Um, again, I'll put a link below if you're interested to some of these things, but I paid for the book and the class for 550. You can buy just the book for $60 and it walks step by step by step on how to plan an irrigation system, how to do hydraulic calculations so that yes, you know that your sprinkler heads will work and how many you can put on the zone and which type of heads you should get and how long you have to run the zones, right? It's a little more complicated than just putting pipe together and then hoping it all works at the end of the day. Um, again, I got a quote to do my yard, my front yard, just my front yard here. So about half an acre, a third of an acre. They wanted $6,000 to put it in. Um, again, I paid probably around $2,550 and that gave me a savings of about $3,450. And yes, I went and did everything by the book correctly. I rented a trencher, so I didn't do it by hand all crazily, no worries. I rented it, uh, I trenched my entire yard, I bought all the PVC, I bought all the sprinkler heads, the electrical and everything. I designed the entire thing myself, submitted plans to be checked by the city water department. So I went through the entire process, and again here, I'm saving $3,450 for this process. Now, this seems a little unrealistic because most of you that have a house probably already have sprinklers installed, but that being said, in the state of Texas, the average cost for a repair for one hour is $100. I should also note the minimum cost to repair a sprinkler system is $100. So if you come out and you need a head replaced, right? So I've done this before, my car, I ran over a head, uh, it broke the pipe or it broke the head. I have to go in and either replace the head, which is super easy to do. Again, you need a nipple extractor to do this though. So again, investing in a few tools, 10, 15 bucks, um, you can extract the nipple underneath, take off the head, put a new head on, you're good to go. Um, I've burst line before by driving over them and it puts too much pressure on the line and split the PVC. So having to go in, dig the hole, cut out the line, put in a new piece, right? it really doesn't cost you that much. Even in parts and everything, if you buy fancy extendable parts that are just easier for the installation process here, you might spend a maximum of 15 to $20 to repair this. So 15 to $20 versus $100. Again, if they have to come out for two hours, right? A lot of times they round up once they start getting past an hour. It's like an hour 35, right? Now it's $200. You might get charged for parts. It's just really expensive to do a lot of this irrigation work. 
um, by paying someone else to do it. So learning this, buying a book, going through the process, guys, use YouTube. YouTube will be your biggest friend in education on a lot of these skills. And then finally, the last two examples here on ways I've saved money. And again, I have a massive list of pro yard projects. I've built fences and all kinds of other projects. Uh, but again, education here is key. Um, I put in a yard. So I got a quote to put sod in. I had no yard. They wanted between $6,000 and $8,000 in quotes to lay Bermuda sod. I don't have six dollars to $8,000 to invest in grass, right? This seems pretty ridiculous. Um, so I went out and spent about $200 to $400 on seed, depending on the type of seed and the amount of grass I needed. Uh, but again, I bought it, so let's just say it's $400. Uh, at minimum, I saved $5,600 here. So that's a huge savings for doing grass and yard work. Again, these are simple things, things you can do, things you can learn. But again, I went online, I watched videos on you know what type of seed to buy, hold, non-hold, coated. Um, when do you actually plant it? So a lot of my neighbors tried putting seed down they spent hundreds of dollars. They even bought like super fancy seeds and spent like, I don't know, 800 to $1,000 on seed. They seeded it, it failed, it didn't work. But again, because they're missing the education piece. And then finally, the last example here is cooking. So yes, cooking will save you money in a lot of different ways. Uh, first off, it is cheaper to eat at home. So right off the bat, you should be saving money by cooking at home versus eating out. I notice when I get into a lazy habit, I eat out more, it ends up costing me more for the month for food. When I cook at home, I save a lot more money. So cooking's good there. But that being said, A, you can cook better food at home if you actually learn to cook. So I know it, it's a skill, again, right? it's education here you need to invest in. So it's hard to make good food, but once you get good at it, you can do it. But the big savings here is if you eat healthier now when you're younger like me, um, when you get older, your health insurance costs are going to be far lower. Your medical bills are going to be far lower. You'll live longer. You'll be happier. So anyways, I hope you guys take away from this video here that there are very creative ways you can spend money as an investment, um, but really investing in your education and the few tools you'll need to do different types of projects, you can save yourself money. Now, if, let's say you can save yourself a little money here, a little money there, right? It'll go a long ways. You could do it in other traditional investments. You could save all that money up perhaps and do something, I don't know, like real estate or like collecting art or fine wines or something that's somewhat expensive to get into. But again, you can save yourself a lot of money by doing education. And yes, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm not talking about a college degree here, but again, a college degree in many scenarios will be beneficial to help you kind of enhance your skills and the value of your labor. But that being said, right, going to trade school, for example, in many cases, these guys in trade schools are gonna make a lot more money in their lifetime uh, than these college degrees because they're gonna spend less money up front. They're gonna be making more money to get going. Um, again, if you just take the time and effort to really enjoy your career, enhance your education, learn some new skills right on the side here, do some things yourself, you'll be a lot further ahead in the long run. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.